welcome back to the Playmat Tutorial channel. In this lesson, we will be looking at limits at infinity and infinite limits. In previous videos, I mentioned that I had used the function 1 over x to explain limit at infinity and infinite limits. Now, for all the other videos, I was just showing 1 over x in the first quadrant. So you were just seeing this. But 1 over x is actually this. So this is my function, 1 over x. So I was explaining in previous videos that 1 over x, if I have a point here, um, let me do that in the next color. If this point here is a, the limit of this function as x approaches a would be the value here. Now when we do limits at infinity, infinity will still be on the x-axis just as a, but it is infinite. It is a number we can't count. If you look at the function 1 over x, you see that the y-axis is an asymptote as well as the x-axis. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote and the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. So the function 1 over x never touches the y-axis, nor does it touch the x-axis. So this function here is getting lower and lower. So we say as x approach infinity, infinity is in this direction, right? So as x approaches infinity, my function approaches what we see the graph approaching here. Remember, 0 is on the y-axis. So it is approaching zero. We can see that graphically. Let me show you with some numbers now. Let me try and get it right here. So if I have one over x and I substitute a 10 for my x, I will have 0 0.1. If I go further to substitute a 100, I will have 0 0.01. And if I continue doing this by adding zeros, then you can see my value, um, let me shift this over a bit. You can see that my value is getting closer and closer to zero. This is just a thousand, and we can see that it is a lot closer to zero than this. Let's say I add a million now. Then that would be equal to, and we see we're getting closer and closer to zero. We're not at zero, but the function is approaching zero as x approach infinity so we say so we say that the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity is equal to 0 and that's based on what we see here when we substitute larger and larger values we see our value approaching 0 right and we can see graphically that as x approaches infinity our curve is getting closer and closer to 0 that is when we are approaching positive infinity. Now say we are approaching negative infinity. Looking on the graph, negative infinity is in this direction, right? So as I approach negative infinity, this is not touching the graph, by the way. 1 over x in the third quadrant isn't touching the graph. It is just as this one. It is asymptotical to the x-axis here and the y-axis as well, the negative y-axis. So as x approaches negative infinity, my function gets closer and closer to zero. Remember, these values here are negative. So probably somewhere at this point, we have, say, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1.9, negative 1.8, negative 1.7 this is not a scaled join we're just seeing for example and somewhere here be 0 0.5 um 0 0.3 and then 0 would be on this axis so 0 coincides with the x-axis right so as we approach negative infinity our function is getting closer and closer to zero as we can see so again we say that the limit of one over x as x approaches negative infinity 
is equal to zero. So now we have those done. Let's move on now to when x is getting smaller and smaller. So here is infinity. And this direction means that we are getting closer and closer to zero. But on this side, we say we are approaching zero from the right. So as we approach zero from the right, we can see our function getting higher and higher. And as we get closer values to zero, say this point here is two, this point here is one, this point here is 0 0.3. As we get closer and closer to zero, remember that this line gets much closer to the line than I drew it. So it's much closer than it is there. So as we get closer and closer to zero, not at zero, because at zero, this limit is discontinuous. And we will look at that in discontinuity. But for now, as we get closer and closer to zero, we can see our function skyrocketing up to infinity so there is an infinity here on our y-axis as well our y-axis goes all the way to infinity so the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the right remember that that little plus means we're approaching from the right is equal to infinity so let me show you now with plugging in some numbers 1 over x if I substitute 10 for my x, I'd have 0 0.1. If I substitute 1, then I will have 1. If I substitute a smaller number than 1, say 0 0.5, I'd have 2. 1 over 0 0.001, this would be a 1,000. And if I go further to say um, 1 over 0 0.000001, then this would be a million, right? So you can see that as this number gets smaller and smaller from the positive side of zero, then my function approaches positive infinity. A million is not an infinite number. but As my x gets smaller and smaller, getting closer to zero, then my value approaches infinity. And we can see that here. If I substituted um, a value, that is smaller than this, much smaller than this, then we'd have a greater number here, right? So if I add a few more zeros, this would be a number with a few more zeros on this side, making it a larger number. So as x approaches zero from the right, our limit is infinity, and that is for the function one over x. And one over x is a really nice function to explain limit at infinity. And that is the reason I'm using this function. Say I'm approaching now zero from the left. So this was approaching zero from the right. I'm using values in this section. Now I will be using values in this section. Let me change this to it. I'm using values in this section. So those values would be values like negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.1, getting closer and closer to zero, right? So we can see, again, as we approach zero, now we're approaching zero from the left. So as we approach zero from the left, we say we start at infinity and we are coming down, getting closer and closer and closer. Well, we skip out all of these because these, we won't really use those values. We will use, if we're substituting in a table, remember we use um, the table of values to do limits in an earlier video. If you were supposed to substitute values, you wouldn't substitute all the values from all the way up there. You'd start substituting at closer values to zero, like negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.1, and getting closer to zero, closer and closer and closer to zero, negative 0 0.001, and getting closer and closer to zero. As we get closer and closer to zero, we say we use the same values here, because that is what will happen. If we were using this, these values, except they would be negative, then this would right? So we can see again that as we approach zero, in this case, from the left, these are negative values, they are getting larger and larger in the negative direction. And if we look on the graph, we can see that this is approaching negative infinity because negative infinity would be in this direction so 
again we have the limit of 1 over x as x approaches 0 from the left would be equal to negative infinity. Let's do some examples with limits at infinity. And please, guys, remember these. You will see them again. So remember these. I have the limit of 3 plus 4x over 7 minus 8x. And this is as x approaches infinity. So when you get questions to find limit at infinity, they are normally in a fractional form. So say you get this question. If you dare to substitute infinity in this example, you will have 3 plus 4 times infinity over 7 minus 8 times infinity. So this is what you, you normally do, right? If I multiply 4 by infinity, it just makes an infinite number, an already infinite number, more infinite, right? So I will just be left with 3 plus infinity over 7 minus infinity. The same thing goes in the denominator here. So if you multiply an infinite number by infinity or, or, or by just a next number, then that number will just be more infinite. So if this was squared, you'd be multiplying infinity by itself, making it more infinite. So if you have this, you will just be left with infinity over infinity, which is indeterminate. Because adding 3 to infinity is just making infinity more infinite. And subtracting infinity from 7, um, I think this would make it negative infinity though. Well, even if it is negative infinity, it would still be indeterminate. So let's do what we are supposed to do when we are dealing with limits at infinity. There are some tricks to it, but before I show you the tricks so you can see what your limit is before I'm going to show you what you do. So this is how you do it. You look in your denominator for x value. Here, here is our x value. And some cases there are more than one x value. So you look for the x value with the i's power or i's degree. So this degree is 1. So what we do, we divide each term in this by this x term, or by this x. So let's do that. So I will now have 3 over x plus 4x over x all over 7 over x minus 8x over x. When you simplify this, you will just have 3 over x plus 4 all over 7 over x minus 8. The reason why you have a 4 and an 8, let me fix this plus sign. So the reason why you have a 4, the x cancels the x here, and the reason for the 8 is the same, x cancels the x. Now we have done that, you want to find the limit of this. So you will write now the limit of 3 over x plus 4 all over 7 over x minus 8. And this is as x approaches infinity, right? So this is what you have. Remember from limits theorem, let me go back to that page of the theorem. So remember from limits theorem, we can do this. If we have the limit of f of x over the limit of g of x, we can rewrite it as the limit of f of x over the limit of g of x, right? So let me do that. So I'm going to do it for this. So I will have this. Um, I don't want to go down in right, Let me do it right here. So I'll have this. This is what it would look like, the limit of 3 over x plus 4 as x approaches infinity. And that is over the limit of 7 over x 
minus 8 and this is as x approaches infinity again i can use a next limit here to do this let me highlight this now in blue to show that there are two functions here or you can consider it to be two different functions that's what i should have said it's not necessarily two different functions but you can consider it to be two different functions so now remember this from limits theorem um this and this both are similar so the limit of f of x plus g of x is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches a plus the limit of g of x as x approaches a and the same thing goes for subtraction so we will use these limit theorem in our example over on the next page so in fact let me try and copy these is just for teaching purposes only in the next video i will be doing some examples so don't worry about me taking this long time this is just for persons who are not seeing exactly what is going on this video this channel and all is to help students who are having problems in class so this is extra help so let's do the question now we will use this theorem here to write rewrite the limits um, this should be a plus sign by the way so we are rewriting the theorem so now i rewrite this as the limit of 3 over x as x approaches infinity plus the limit of 4 as x approaches infinity and that will now be over the limit of 7 over x as x approaches infinity minus the limit of 8 as x approaches infinity um, let me try and get this down so this is me rewriting using these theorems here remember that this should be a plus so we are we use these theorem to do this now we are going to find the limits of each individual term remember just now when we looked at limits at infinity the, the first part of this video um let me try and get that right here the first part of this video i add the limit of one over x as x approach infinity and i said that was zero right now 3 over x is no much different than 1 over x both are similar functions if we are to draw 3 over x or 7 over x or any constant over x the function would have the same shape or similar shape right so that means that these limits approach zero themselves right so i have zero plus four how did i get four remember the limit of a constant let me write that here to refresh your memory the limit of a constant as x approaches a point a is equal to that constant and if you want to see that graphically so say this point here is k that's my k any point i choose on my x-axis i will still be approaching k right so if I choose um, this point here, I will be approaching k. And if I go here, I will be approaching k. So even at infinity, anywhere on the x-axis, because it's parallel to the constant, whatever constant, if this was 3 or if this was 4, whatever constant it is, as I approach any x value, my limit would be at this point. So if this is my a, then I'll be, my limit would be approaching this point. And the same thing here. If that was my A, and this is a larger A, so say this is now infinity, for example, we're working with infinity, I will still be at K. So that's why I have a four here. And I don't have to explain the denominator because the same thing goes. So I now have zero plus four over zero minus eight 
and if i clean this up i will be left with minus four over eight right and that's the limit of this and i could go further to simplify this i would be left with negative a half right is limits at infinity and infinite limits and i realized that i did limits at infinity but i didn't do infinite limits so let's look at an example of what would be an infinite limit the limit of 3x squared as x approaches infinity would be infinite just by just looking at it right and i will show you graphically as well as if i was supposed to substitute infinity Say I substitute infinity in this, I have 3 times infinity squared. And remember, when you square a number or a variable, that is multiplying it by itself. Right? So if I multiply infinity by itself, that just makes infinity more infinite. So I will be left with 3 times infinity. Same thing, because infinity is infinity. So when you square it, you just make it more infinite. And then when I multiply it by 3, I just make it more infinite. So the limit of this function as x approaches infinity would be infinity. A next way you could have infinity. Say you have this question. The limit of 4 over x squared as x approaches 0. We directly substitute 0 in this. We will have this, right? And we have 4 over 0. And you may be saying, why am I saying this is an infinite limit? Why is it not undefined? Because 4 divided by 0. But if we should draw the function. A function would look like this. Um, I can't do much better than this. But if or if we are approaching zero, we can see that if we're approaching it from the left or from the right, then we approach infinity. This is what the function 4 over x would look like. Um, I was trying to draw this much better. If you want to see a better picture of this, then you can Google it and see what the function 4 over x looks like. Um, I might Google it and screenshot it and put it somewhere here on the screen so the function 4 over x is somewhat shaped like this so as we approach zero either from the left or from the right our function approaches infinity and that's positive infinity so the limit of this would be equal to infinity and you will see more about this especially when we will be talking about um every bottom functions meaning that we will talk about that this video is too long so in the next video i will be doing some examples so thank you guys for watching this is it if you have any problem please comment down below 